As you can probably tell from uh, many of my previous videos, I've always had a fascination with uh, LEDs and controlling them and getting them to flash in different ways. Uh, for example, here's a, uh, a bicycle helmet flasher that I designed and built some years ago. This was actually a cover story on Nuts and Volts magazine. Uh, the lights are blinking, which is great for being uh, uh, visible early morning when I ride, but it's also blinking out the temperature. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, whoop, 61 degrees down here right now. And that repeats. It's kind of entertaining uh, for the guys that are behind me, or if I kind of aim it down so I can see the uh, reflection of my speedometer, I can tell the temperature. One of the things that I've done for years is on a, uh, a special birthday for a friend, whether that be, you know, 50, 60, 70, or whatever, I'll build a little radio tower, something like this, out of brass, and put an LED at the top that flashes out something important, or appropriate at least, in Morse code. Uh, as you can imagine, that's a little tedious to uh, cut and fit all of those little pieces. So I decided this year, I've got a friend who's turning 70 next week, that I'd try using my laser cutter. And there's the finished product. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. There's a, a tower with a little top on it, three LEDs. This is flashing out uh, Rocky is 70. And there's a little uh, shed down here, and if I take the shed off, you'll see inside is a 9-volt uh, a battery. And actually, the exact same circuit board that's in the helmet, only it's been reprogrammed. Instead of sending out the temperature, it sends out the Morris code. I'd like to take a few minutes to show you how this thing developed. Uh, here's the uh, unbuilt version, and that's made up of three pieces of the base. I have little notches that I cut fits together real nicely and this little triangle I can put on top to hold that that's going to have the uh, the tower top sitting on it for lack of a better word we'll just call it the tower top so that sits up here and that of course is made up of three little segments as well and there's a base that has triangular cutouts in it and with a little bit of luck you can force that into those holes and that'll hold the base of the tower and the shed there's a uh, the back and one of the sides this has little uh, uh, joints finger joints that make it very substantial once you put some glue on it so we'll put that together and that fits up here there's a roof that gets glued on top and the whole thing gets wired through this hole underneath uh, into the tower itself and as I said, the, uh, the tower top sits up there. And there's a triangle with holes for LEDs that go up there as well. What I'd like to do now is take a few minutes to walk you through some of the basics of how I send this from the computer, which is over here, to the laser cutter, which is over there. Okay, here we are in Corel Draw. And you'll see that we have the, uh, the three sections for the tower itself at the top, the three sections for the top of the tower here. This is a base for that tower top and this is the top for the tower top. Also includes holes for the LEDs that I'll be using. Uh, what I'd like to do with this is, is to point out uh, some perhaps unusual things. If I zoom in here, you'll notice that some of the lines are black such as these and some of the lines are blue. The reason that I did that is I want to have the option of uh, having it cut out the, the triangles, these little parts inside first, the part inside of the black lines. Then when that's all done, it'll go back and cut out the outline, the blue part, so that these little triangles can fall through uh, as they're being cut. But you don't want the big part of it falling before all the triangles are cut. Otherwise, you'll have a misalignment and misfocus. All sorts of bad things will happen. Okay, let's say all we want to do is to cut these three. I always like to take the cursor and put it right here on the corner. And I can measure, okay, I'm going to need a piece of paper, plywood rather, that's about 12, 12 and a half inches uh, long. And uh, let me reposition that real quickly here and about seven, seven and a half inches. So I need roughly 12 and a half by seven and a half inches. So let's highlight just the things we want to print and go up to this icon, which is the plug-in icon for 
Um, RD works the, uh, the laser software that comes with the laser cutter. You'll see it's transferring all of that data now into the laser cutter itself, laser cutter software, I should say. And in a moment, that will come up. There we go. And you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, it shows that some of it is in blue and some of it is in black. Well, I want to make sure that it cuts the black before the blue, so I'm going to take this blue layer and drag it down here. Now it says it's going to do the black first and then the blue, which is exactly what I want. To double check that, I have a little TV screen up here that says Preview. And if I click on that and click on Simulation, you can see it's cutting out the triangles and some of the other parts first, and it will not cut the outer portions until all of those little triangles are cut. Okay, let's get out of there. In order to print, what I like to do is to turn the laser on, and I can do that with Alexa. I can say, Alexa, turn laser on. And I don't know if you can hear it across the room, but the laser cutter came on. And I have the power to the laser itself shut off. I'm going to click on Start. And then I'm going to click on Stop. What that did was simply to send the data for this cut over the Ethernet. It's connected via Ethernet uh, to the laser cutter. And then I told it to stop because they don't actually want it to go through the whole process. Next thing we'll do is go over to the laser cutter itself and take a look at what it takes to actually cut this out of a piece of plywood. Okay, at this point we're going to move from the computer over to the laser cutter. A couple of other projects going on. My little uh, swing for a train layout that we're doing. But the, the laser cutter itself is, oh, I don't know, 20 or 25 feet away from my work computer. The reason for that is there's a window there and I have a vent uh, that vents to the outside. I've also got a laptop set up next to it. This laptop is showing the exact same screen as my desktop and that's because I'm running VNC server on the big computer and VNC client, client, client excuse me, on this one. And of course I can use this to start and stop things, do whatever I want. Over here, you'll notice on the side that there's one light lit. That's the power, the main power to the computer in the laser cutter. The other three switches are off. That uh, controls things like the pump for the water cooling, the, uh, the, the uh, air compressor for the air drive, and the laser itself. I'm going to turn all of those on. Makes a lot of noise once I do that. I have a piece of uh, plywood, eighth inch plywood, in the machine. And you may remember that I sent the data for that uh, section of towers to the laser cutter. So if I press the frame button, I'll do that over here. I'm going to do that one more time. You'll notice that the little red laser marks out how much space I need. And now if I press the start stop button here, it's actually cutting. Now that's going to take quite a while. I'll speed this up uh, so that you can look at it uh, <laughs> in two minutes instead of about 20. The other interesting thing about this controller, let me see if I can show you here, it's actually drawing out each of those little cuts as it's doing it. There you go. So it gives you a good idea of what's been done and what's left. It also shows you the, uh, the power settings to the right there. Okay, we'll come back to this when it's finished.